Okay, uh, welcome everyone to the talk about fuzzy testing. Let me introduce my colleague, Julian. He is going to run the demo. Uh, it's his work and I have to present it because I was not reliably able to run the demo. So it's, he is going to run the demo. I am going to do the easy part, the talking about the demo. Um, yeah, let's write, uh, let us write, dive into the talk. Um, what is fuzzy testing? So what do we do there? The idea here is we want to have unit and integration tests and unit and integration tests require some input for the function that we are testing or for a scenario that we are testing and the idea of fuzzy testing is to automatically generate that input and then run the same test all over again and again with different inputs to reach a certain test coverage that you want to reach. So the goal is to increase code coverage of tests with just having a minimum number of tests with minimum effort by modifying the input in a sensible way and thereby to discover more bugs and hopefully thereby to increase your software quality. <coughs> so that is the vision that we have. Um, and this is also technology-wise what we have done. So what we have here in the application is an EMF model describing the valid inputs, the valid data sets that are available. So this EMF model basically describes exactly how the data may look like. And what we will do is then we will generate different EMF model instances from that model. So for instance, we have a model with a bowling tournament. In that tournament is some string um, and uh, maybe some references to other classes. So what we can do is we can generate tournaments with different names and with different amounts of players that are being referenced. And what we do now with that model instance, we use it for a JUnit test. It's a normal JUnit test, but it gets input from outside. This generated input that is based on a seed, so it's randomly generated. And we run the JUnit test with that. And we may run it from within the IDE at development time so that we can try to reproduce bugs early on. And in the second scenario, we will also run that on a build server so that the build server can run these tests. How uh, does the general setup look like? Uh, we have different parts. The first part is what we call a model mutator and generator. What it does is it generates EMF model instances. So it looks at an EMF model that describes how the data look like and it derives instances from that, randomly generated instances. And the second thing it can do, that's why it's also called mutator, it can also take the model as an input, the model instance as an input, and just arbitrarily change something in that. And how it works is you give the mutator a seed, so it's pseudo-random change based on a seed, uh, but it's deterministic, which is very important for testing, of course, so that you can rerun a test with a certain test seed and you get the same model instance and therefore you get the same test results. The second thing that we need is a JUnit runner. JUnit allows you to enhance uh, the existing runner to run, to implement your own runner. It basically runs the test and what the fuzzy runner does is it executes tests repeatedly with different seeds. And by using that runner, we can just reuse the whole existing JUnit infrastructure. So you have the JUnit view, you can use Mylin to connect to the build server, you can run it on the build server and all that things. And finally, that's the missing part now, is we need a data provider that provides input to the different test runs. And that data provider um, can be adapted to different types and what we will show today, types of data, and what we will show today is an EMF data provider which based on a given EMF model will generate these model instances. This is a simple demo. And Julian, you can <coughs> tell us. What okay, um, so everything is working with annotations here like um, you're used to in a JUnit. And we have the JUnit annotation run with, which specifies the runner, the type of runner, and it's the fuzzy runner. And the second one specifies the data provider type, and in this case, it's the EMF data provider, <coughs> which you can adapt, for example, for int or something, everything what you want. And then, 
Um, we have an attribute, in this case it's an e-object. Of course the attribute has to fit, the type of the attribute has to fit to the data provider and we annotate this with the data annotation. And then the fuzzy runner um, takes the data from the data provider and injects it into this attribute. Um, in addition we have here a util which gives you some information about um, the, the run number for example. So this is a very um, easy test, not very sensible, but for demonstration purposes first we check if root isn't null, so is there something in this attribute and when we have uh, test number 3 will fail and test number 5 will throw an exception. So let's debug this. Uh, so, um, let's take a look at the root object and the elements contained in this root object. As you can see, here's a game and the player to points map and an area, just for example. So this is the first test run and then we, when we resume now, we get to the second test run. The same test is executed but with a different model. As you can see here, now we have an area, a matchup and a league. So let's remove this breakpoint and go through this. And um, it's configured to run uh, 5,000 tests. As you can see here, everything is working, um, but only test number three and test number five, as we declared here. And now you can say, okay, number three has failed, so I look at it and you rerun it, and you get the, exactly the same model injected into this test. So it saves the seed that the generator was based on, and it now reruns the test with the same seed which is essential for you for debugging, otherwise that wouldn't work out. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of trouble in the beginning. If you, for example, in your program at some point in time use a hash map, not a linked hash map, then the iteration order may differ from test run to test run, and it drives you crazy because you think, okay, everything should be the same, but it's not. So, and the only thing what's missing now is um, a small configuration, which can you configure via an editor, um, where you can, for example, say uh, how often should this test be executed here or how should the mutator work where you can say use this EMF e-package or you can say I don't want to use specific e-classes and so on. This is very specific to the EMF data provider already. So, let's go on. Okay, that, that was a simple test case that we have seen, so what do we use it for? And we used it for a very specific test case in a framework that we are developing, it's called EMS Store. And we used it there, I would say, quite successfully, that's why I want to demo this example. Um, the problem that we have in this framework is, this framework has instances of what we call a project. And the project can be changed over time by one client, that's the original setup, and then the changes are recorded as what we call operations, and these changes can be applied to a second client. And what we need to make sure, absolutely sure, is that the mutated instance, so the instance that has been changed here, and this is the resulting instance, is exactly the same as the instance that has been created by recording the changes, transporting it to another client, and then applying the changes. And this is exactly something you can do very well with this kind of testing because you can write one test case that will just pseudo-randomly create this instance, pseudo-randomly mutate the instance, derive the operations, apply it to a copy of that instance, and then see whether the two instances are the same. And then run this test case 100,000 times and measure how your test coverage is on the, for example, on the code that is on applying these operations. Okay, let's dive into the code. So, uh, we have uh, the same setup of the fuzzy runner and the MF data provider. Um, the data attribute is in the superclass fuzzy project test. And so, as Max described, um, we have a project or project space here and a model mutator configuration defining how this should be mutated. Then um, mutate the project, it is wrapped into a command to track and record the operations. 
then get the copy project space, and then apply the operations on this copy project space. And then we compare it. So as this is a little bit more expensive, uh, we only run it 10 times here. And as you can see, everything is green, which is nice, uh, but our experience was uh, in the beginning, other one. Um, we ran it 10,000 times, and uh, in the beginning there were about 50% of failure or errors, so, um, with a model size of 1,000. So it took a long time to do it, but uh, we discovered there and solved about 15 bucks, which were often being corner cases, but that's one of the strengths of uh, fuzzy testing, uh, to detect corner cases. Um, and these bugs were from lightweight, like null pointer exceptions, to very high structural problems with a long chain of operations on these um, models. The, the other thing that we kind of determined as, as a result of applying that is in the beginning it can be very frustrating because if you run that, you will have many errors, although maybe in a practical application there are not that many. But as soon as you are at a certain, you reach a certain stability, suddenly the errors really go down because it might well be that the cause for this bug and for this and for this and for this one are all the same. So in the beginning it doesn't really make sense to run it a hundred thousand times because you will find bugs earlier. So it's really worth to increase the bond sizes in our case, the data sizes and the number of runs over time so that over time you get more, more bugs. In, in the later runs. Yeah, and of course it's much more easier uh, to find a bug in a smaller instance of a model. If you have an, a model instance with 1000 elements, it's very, very hard to find the reason for the bug. Um, of course, the target is not only to run 100,000 tests, because, I mean, that doesn't make sense. Uh, the target is that you have a certain code coverage in a certain area where you want to have that coverage. So for example, this test case was aiming at the change tracking that we have, so we wanted to reach a test coverage there. And uh, with ECL Emma, you can easily measure your test coverage during these test runs, and it often helps to adjust your test case or in your data generator, because in the beginning, when we uh, when we first programmed this EMF data provider, it would not have all the necessary vari variations in the generated data that would really uh, trigger all the cases that we had in code. So, um, as you can see here, you have one view um, showing in percentage uh, the code coverage, and very interesting is, of course, here um, the, the colored marking uh, for each line, so you can detect uh, where you have to um, test more and what is um, apply, what gets uh, executed here. So this was very helpful in this case. Okay, so that's interesting to do that in the IDE, but of course it's also interesting to somehow integrate that and you build and the setup that we have here and that we are also running is the following. Um, we have an explorer job on the build server and that explorer job runs a certain amount of minutes a day just for exploring interesting seeds. So seeds that fail and the, these seeds are then by a second process, a second job, that's only for technical reasons, but it triggers a second job, it's a differ and it finds out, it has a strategy to find out which are the interesting seeds. So in our current implementation, interesting seeds are seeds that have been failing in the last runs, I think the, uh, or many, the last couple of runs, or that have switched their state the last couple of runs. So these are tests that have been failing or have failed before but have been working in the last one. So hopefully interesting seeds. That is generally what the differ should find out. And it then provides a result for the last uh, job that is basically your integration test. And in your integration test you run also your fuzzy tests, but only based on the seeds that have been filtered here. 
so that your integration build is still in a sensible amount of time. While you also have the explorer task, which could at some point in time find interesting scenes that it reruns in the integration test. And this setup we just demo on a local machine, very easy setup, but yeah, go ahead. Doesn't that mean that uh, when the explorer finds a new problem, the integration test will fail it on the next day? Exactly, yeah. And it's, it's just a trick to make the integration test faster. What I would like is the integration test to fail right away, but it's for, yeah, for a proper number of seeds that you want to try. You try 10 or 100,000, it's just too much if you have different test cases that each run 100,000 times. So we try, with that strategy, we try to pick the most interesting one. It can lead to a delay in detecting a bug, but at least it detects it over time. And you can kind of shift that also. You can run the explorer task for a longer amount of time, for example, to discover more. OK, so um, first we've thought about showing this live, but this would end up in 30 minute console watching, not very interesting. Um, so we have these three jobs, explorer, differ, and builder. And here's one uh, test result. And we ran ten, not 10 times the fuzzy test, as you can see, in test number three and five failed here. So this is uh, one execution or one run of the job. Um, and the run before was the same. So we have two times the same test results. So the differ runs and then creates uh, something like this diff XML containing um, a diff report, containing the um, the test results, the interesting test results with the old result and the new result so that you can analyze and compare it for later on. And then the builder takes the stiff result and executes only the, um, the failed test or the interesting test. As you can see, there are only two tests executed, number three and number five. And you can also then use uh, the Mylan builds view, for example, and take a look at this. And let's show you the test results of the, in the JUnit view, and then analyze the interesting tests in your IDE. So um, what did we try to do? Um, we tried to increase the effectiveness of, of our testing by using pseudo randomly generated data, but in a deterministic way, and then run the same test all over again with different inputs. Um, and to our experience, this uh, really helps to discover and solve more bugs and increase our software quality, especially corner cases that are wouldn't think of by creating manual tests are uh, often found by, by this fuzzy testing and uh, everything that we have presented today is uh, available as part of the EMS Talk project. We have published all the plugins, the fuzzy testing plugins and there is even an installable feature and that concludes our talk. If you have any questions, please go ahead. Is there any way to direct the generator? In what it should generate? Yeah. Yeah, in, in, in our case, the CMF generator, you can direct it in terms of the size of the model you want to generate, yeah. and in terms of which of the packages should be, the registered EMF packages should be included in the generation. And you can exclude uh, specific E-classes and structural features, and you can say uh, how the model size you can configure, and if you mutate it, how much of, uh, elements should be deleted and so on. So right. there are some. And you can use uh, the model mutator uh, for its own, so you don't you can use it directly for other testing purposes. It's not bound to the rest of the fuzzy testing yeah. framework. You can also use it just as a generator without running the fuzzy test framework. Uh, and the values of how you enhance the values? They're randomly generated. So if you have a string, you just randomly generate the string. Supposing you don't want to give some values, then we have to have a manual test process. 
Do you want to have manual values? Is there any extension point where you can? No, not that? not at the moment. No. It's probably easy to change things like yeah. that. Yeah. Use cases, of course, that the the possible. I mean, yeah. the, the domain model is so large that you could drop every model. Yeah. And some sort of preconditions for the test. So hit uh, two to one of the edge cases are always the key of fuzzy testing. So the ability to generate certain types of data is important. Like for what she was mentioning, you can generate an integer that's just below the maximum integer and mm -hmm. test out with that, not just generate strings that are super long or have mm -hmm. strange characters in them, whatever. Um, I guess I don't know much about any of that. Is this useful? It sounds like fuzzy testing could be used outside EMF. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a known concept, fuzzy testing. So people yeah. use it, of course, outside EMF. The difficult part is providing random input data. And with EMF, you are in, in a good place to have a defined data model where you can say, ah, OK, this is a valid input. Other fuzzy testing uh, also focus on providing invalid input and thereby also testing errors. But of course, that kind of you have less test cases for the valid inputs then because it will randomly generate a lot of things that don't work out at all. But what you could definitely do is plug in, that's why we made the data provider pluggable. So you can plug in another data provider that on some other way, I don't know, based on the XML schema or something like that, derives what your data is and should look like. It's a generally applicable principle, but we did it with you. Uh, so this was developed just as a helper project for... Yeah, it started as a helper project. But now it's its own project? Or is it yeah, no, it's not its own. It's within the Investor project. We put it out there. Yeah. If, it, if people like it, it might get an old project, but currently I think it's not, it's not necessary at the current point in time. But it's open source. You can do with it whatever you want. Okay. Thank you.